Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of Europa Universalis 4 for Absolute Beginners. And when we last left off, we did some work up in Denmark, and we got involved in this war here, the Genese Conquest of the Piedmont. So, I believe we allied Genoa, because they were friends with, you know, Aquitaine and all of our good buddies, and now they decide they want to take Piedmont. So that's the war goal. I'm not exactly sure where Piedmont is, or P Piedmont. So right there is where Genoa wants to go. Uh, we have allies here in Aquitaine sieging down that, and all of the allies. I think we were trying to do some hands-off stuff for this particular war. We could go ahead and send a siege squad down there to knock down Triol in the mountains. I think that 22 stack should be good enough to do it and stave off the 13 and the 12, but we're going to need a leader, and we have a high maneuver and a siege pip guy. So it seems a pretty good. So this will be our expeditionary force here. We probably could use a few more cavalry. Uh, so what is our combat width? Just for uh, shiggles here, our combat width is 27. So we could stand for three more cav, and that would be 25. I mean, we could go two more infantry as far as that's concerned as well. But let's go ahead and get uh, three cavalry over here that's fully up and ready. And we'll march them that way, join them up, and everything should be good. We are also working on claims on uh, Norway up here. So let's go ahead and fabricate the claim on Finnmark. And now we have a claim to justify the war to take Finnmark. And because we don't have any land that connects the rest of Norway, that's really all we're going to be after. And we'll focus on that uh, once this particular war is done. We have claims on provinces we don't own, Loon and Finnmark. Uh, so Loon is right here. We were fabricating on Cologne. Okay. And then we don't want to be Defender of the Faith. That's fine. Disputed succession with Tiver, Baghdad, and Galilee. Meh. Province improvements. Definitely want to do that. Let's take a look and see if a church... Uh, I mean, we might be able to just swing these .13s. So that should be fine. Let's take a look at our other buildings. Does a workshop make sense? Yep, in Vlandrin and Ghent. Workshops make sense. Uh, marketplaces. Yep. Marketplace there in Cambrai. The rest of them are uh, decent enough. Manufactory I don't think we need. And we were looking at building a fort here. We have a fort here on the coast, but we don't have a fort here in any of these particular lands to protect, um, you know, these adjacent provinces. So, let's see. Oplanda. Can we place anything in Oplanda? No possible buildings. Oh, we're working to make it a core, so we can't put anything down just yet. That's fine. Uh, we are coring. And we do have rebels. Uh, Danish separatists at 40% and Norwegian separatists at 30. And Akershus is going to be the big point of contention, it seems. So we are in, yeah, Yopland and Trondelag. I actually don't see Trondelag down there. Let's go ahead and get these eight down to Akershus and try to curb that. That's fine. Truces will expire with Norway in three years, and then Powhatan a little bit later, that's cool. We know about our unrest, we know about the war, and our quality ideas for military. We were actually waiting on military tech. We're two years ahead of time, and it's going to take about that long to gain military points. If we look at our court, oh no, that's right, we've got a good high king. So is it worth it to take the idea group then? If we take the idea group, the cavalry combat ability goes up, and I don't see our cavalry doing too awful much, and it's not going to tick the next early industrialization marker. So I think we hold off until we can invest in the new military tech, which can give us new cavalry anyway, Con uh, better combat with, and infantry fire. So now that we are all set, one thing that I do want to discuss is our government situation. So we are 
at risk of becoming a personal union, I believe, because we have no legal heir and we have royal marriages with some pretty powerful people. Now, if our ruler dies, that leaves us completely open and wars can break out to basically become our partner. We will become a junior, meaning we will be a vassal of somebody as big as we are. Granted, we can immediately declare an independence war and break away. I, I have no problem there, but just that the fact that we have to go through that is a little disconcerting. All right, let's go ahead and play at speed two. Ah, speed three, why not? We'll get our three cavalry over here to this 22 stack. We have our leader in charge, Edward Saunders, and we can get on the war goal. Yep, I know men are suffering casualties. All right, Akashus is now, Trondelag, and Ramsdal Smalane. So we have cored all of those. Let's make sure uh, that our cores are good. We're still at 13%, and all of those cores will be done shortly. That should lower some unrest. We've got 25 brave troops that's ready to get on the war goal. So let's go. We'll see what we can do here. Looks like this 17 stack of Genoa is focusing on the war goal as well. We might do some cleanup here in the interim. Yeah, they're going to take that war goal. Let's see if we can just march on through and see if we can pick off some of these little armies here. So they got a wall breach. We're bringing our 25,000 troops to bear against this 13 stack. They have a decent leader, though. They have a... Mazab? Nope. Sorry. All right, so they have the war goal. The 17 stack is marching away. Let's see, we have lost colonialism against Pisa. We have gained the Pisan West Indies and uh, internal conflicts in the Temerids. That's fine, they are a ways away. All right, so we need to get up there and try to reinforce. Yamplin is a core. All right, there we go, good. Good, good, good. We are flanking with our four cavalry. Laying the smacketh down. So that, that army reinforced and they're a tad bit, no, I thought we were uh, a tad bit narrower, but we're wider. We won the siege of Württemberg. And that was a pretty knockout, drag out battle, but that should give us some good participation here. 67% uh, on the participation. I like it. All right, so where else should we go? There is Genoa there. Who else is involved in the war? Ancona is in the war. Where are they? So this is Ancona. We can siege them down and try to get them out of the war. And it looks like with little effort. Let's see if anyone is smaller. Dauphine is right there. And it's unguarded, unprotected. Let's go ahead and siege down Dauphine. Let's see if we can get one of these junior partners out of the war. We'll go ahead and reinforce up. All right, so there's a big stack. All right, so we were sieging down Ferrara, it seems. And they have enough cannon to do it. We were going to work on this siege here. So we've got two stacks doing sieges. We might as well move to the center and get that fort knocked down if we can. So is Aquitaine going to come and try to siege this down? It looks like they're just sort of marching through. Loon, yep. We've lost against Cologne, but we are fabricating against them. Wouldn't be anything to take it. So there we go. We're going to hold fast right here in the Siege of Leon. We've got four artillery bonus plus our siege leader. All right, everything is looking awesome. Uh, how is our rebels doing? So 0.7, those should tick down. 12 years and 16 years. Yeah, so is Yomplin part of a rebel faction? I don't believe they are. No, well, we're, we're keeping them at bay. How much are we keeping them at bay by? Oh, 0.5. All right, so we don't want to remove them from Yachtland just yet. Although that is a fort. Akershus is not protected by a fort. Let's move there and actually get a fort in Oplanda. So that will protect these provinces around here. Akershus... Double protection on Trondelag. Should be fine. Alright, so how are things going? Negative 7 there. 
Hopefully the war is going well for our buddies. We do have the war goal still. And Kona is 100% blockaded. That's going to wear him out a bit. We're already making positive siege status on Dauphin. So if we can get them out of the war, all the better. Uh, to Cologne caught us spying. Tis a shame, I say. We still have a free diplomat. Not too worried about the free diplomat right now. We'll need one uh, eventually. All right, so where do we build our next building? A manufactory? In Norfolk? Hmm. Oh, nice. Provincial trade power in, yeah, colonialism. So they adapted colonialism, and yeah, that makes me... Oh, we have a new heir. The succession is safe, but he is a terrible heir. A 2-1-1. But at least we will not be a junior partner in anything. But if this George... What is it with the Georges and sucking? That I wonder. I wonder indeed. Are you going to try to relieve this siege? Are you coming at us, bro? The Siege of Ulm is over. Looks like Saxony and Triol are marching right on by. They would be crazy to throw themselves at our 25 stack. And it looks like Aquitaine sort of got them on the run. It wouldn't be surprising if I saw some of our colonies, you know, like coming down here and trying to, trying to help out, you know. Defenders desert, 71% chance of success. So this should fall here in a second. That will swing the war score really high. Triol is getting beaten up. We're winning everything, which is kind of what we do. Trading in glass happened to us. So diplomatic technology cost goes down. There's Leone done. So the war goal is still sieged down. We have a junior partner completely and utterly crushed. Um, where... Does Dauphine have an army? I wonder. Let's check the ledger. Does Dauphine have an army? No, they don't. So they're pretty much wrecked. Um, I expect Dauphine to be out of this war very soon. Um, I think we should pick on some of these guys over here. See if we can lure this uh, 20 stack away. The 20 stack is going to try to snipe the five. I don't think we'll be able to get there in time, but we did shake the boots. All right, so before we engage, they've got nine in the front. Well, you know, uh, 14 in the front. We've got 17 plus four in the front. We just need to head them off at the pass, which we shall. We'll catch them off guard. They have a little bit lower morale. We're going to be flanking them. So even though we took that crossing penalty, we caught them with their pants down. So yeah, we lost no cab and no cannon and, you know, equal number of infantry, but we slaughtered their cab. Depletion of the European beaver. Interesting. European beaver is uh, getting picked off. Oh, they decided, yeah, massive stack wipe. They stopped. So we stack wiped that army because they had no morale. The siege of Belgium is over. And we went to work on that group as well. So low enthusiasm all over the board. They are getting absolutely wrecked. 15,000 troops to their name. 4,000 from Saxony. 5,000 from Ancona. 6,000 from Ferrara. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to siege down Aquitaine. We can protect our buddy. This this is just sort of uh, free stuff. All right, so Ulm siege is over. Can we split and do a couple different sieges here? We'll try to siege down Ferrara as much as we can. Keep the stacks nice and big. Oh, really, sir? Is that what you're trying to do? Well, welcome to Great Britain, good sir. I am afraid. Now, if the AK can keep that 14K occupied for a bit, that'd be pretty cool. So, yeah, and Kona's trying to siege our stuff down. That just won't do. So, is that where you guys are going to go? 
So they're marching together, 21 stack. They're trying to run for their lives is what they're trying to do. And they have split apart from each other. So there goes Ancona out of the war. The Italian engineer, so this is a, well, <laughs> we hired him. And we can invest in military power. We're not ahead of time. I think we can do that. That will give us better infantry fire. So we'll go ahead and take that. And we can upgrade our cav. So our cav will be a little bit lowered morale for a bit while they upgrade, but that should be fine. All right, let's take... These guys up to Wurzburg, take these guys up to Ansbach. We're working on sieging this back down. So that should be fine. We'll siege back our stuff. See if we can put some pressure on Ferrara to get out of the war. They're on low enthusiasm. We've got 58%. Oh, really, fool? Welcome to Earth. So we'll reinforce. They have a really good leader. We definitely need to reinforce. Come on, hold out, gents. Hold out. So we couldn't hold out, but they ran. The Battle of Warsburg. Okay, so this guy is retreating a bit. Should be fine. So we'll let them get their morale back. The 14 stack will head on back up to Warsburg. Should only be a matter of time before we get Brussels back. And we do have a lot of friends in the AO. That is for sure. Low enthusiasm everywhere. We're going to take some sieges. Looks like Thuringian and Mines are the last holdouts here. So Thuringian will be taken. And this should put a lot of pressure on Ferrara. To get out. Yeah, we, we completely wrecked them. Nice. Population in Santee. We're about to get our fort back, so they're going to lose a lot more war score there. Yep. This war was a good one for Genoa. That is for sure. So 1.9k. We have Thuringian. Oh, man. Are they involved in another war? Yeah, Triola is getting wrecked by the Austria. How cool is that? All right, boys, I think you have done your job. Let's go ahead home to Valois. Now that Ferrara is completely and utterly decimated here. Yeah, they've got massive war exhaustion. They're not going to be too happy about things. I uh, Actually, there they are. So Genoa accepted peace for Ferrara. So Ferrara is now out of the war. Gual is self-sustaining. All right, so where was that? Um, I'm actually not sure where that was. Is that over here? So Santee is getting built. There we go. Guale is part of the colonies. Kusabo, 553. Three. Let's just keep on working on Kusabo. Should be fine. Only 500 natives. We'll go ahead and send our colonists. Continue on. All right, so our troops are coming home. Valois can hold 38 troops. Genoa, so the war is over. Triol will cede Piedmont to Genoa. Triol will pay 355 ducats. So I think we've got some of, you know, some money out of that for sure. And that's pretty handy because the truce is about over up here in Norway. Now, I don't think we need a big expeditionary force as we are um, trying to quell the Danish. So that will go away slowly, and then the revolt in Akershus will slowly go away. So we'll keep that up and running. We've got 31 troops here freezing their, their knickers off. Get over to that, Stavanger, please, so you don't take attrition. Pisa Civil War. Well, that's pretty pretty big all right guys go ahead and chill there go ahead and get your armies resituated I will take the 25 stack and place them in a place that you know they can support how about co that should be fine for them 
Hopefully they get out of there before the end of the month. Be a shame if we took attrition in our own lands because they couldn't get out. There we go. So yeah, pretty solid stuff. Pretty solid stuff indeed. So reinforcements are done. Provincial unrest in Akershus, so should tick down shortly. We didn't take anything from that war, and holy crap, Pisa is getting pretty wrecked, I must say. We spy network in Norway, and I don't believe we can do anything else as far as fabricating claims. No, we can't. We can support rebels to, to mess them up. Norwegian peasants have already revolted. We can get Lollard heretics. Over five years, it's six ducats? Nah. No need to do that. We, we don't need to destabilize anybody. All right, so we'll keep our spy. No, we don't even need our spy there for the, uh, the siege speed. All right, so let's go ahead and top off with our friends. While we're at it, 58 improved relations. Let's go ahead and improve there. We also need maybe Aquitaine. Oh, they're maxed. Maxed to the max. Fought to the end. Uh, how about Pope Man? Where is the Papal State? Probably wouldn't hurt to improve relations with the Pope. So we've got our diplomats doing such and such. Alliance from Galicia. Nope, sorry, don't think so. All right, province improvements. Let's say Santee has wrote, risen up. Truce with Norway has ended. So we can move on Norway right now if we wanted to. I think we would have to move ships. To get up in here to siege the rest of this stuff down if we were to declare on Norway holy crap the uh, the peasants are wrecking them so do we wait until the peasants are gone because I don't want to fight Norwegian peasants that seems like a waste of manpower so we'll wait and see what happens once this these hash marks go away in Norway we'll, we'll jump on them uh, we are also fabricating in Cologne so if we fabricate a claim, we can go ahead and get a claim on Den Haag, as that's a pretty powerful uh, location there. And if we were to declare war on them, yeah, let's move them back, see what would happen. I believe Austria is still the Holy Roman Emperor. So Austria would come in, and they would be a co-belligerent, co so they would call in Sousa, Aquitaine, and the Company of St. George, allied to the Holy Roman Empire. So, yeah, Austria needs to stop being the Holy Roman Emperor. And this would be a thing in Crusader Kings where I would go and I would try to plot to kill the Holy Roman Emperor. Because as of now, the kid is uh, 22 years old. No, that's the heir. The kid is 40. And once the 40-year-old dies, there will be a new election. Hopefully, they won't win the election. And we'll be able to do some stuff. Converted provinces Catholic in Stavanger for 29 months. I mean, it seems like a good idea. Is Stavanger rebelling right now? No, Akershus is. I think we can afford to do that. So we'll go ahead and try to convert them. The unrest is at negative 90. Oh, because of their recent uprising. So, yeah, we can free and clear. Um, convert them. All right, new trade good. Chikara is iron. Unrest. So we can't lower autonomy there, but we can try to lower autonomy there. It's local unrest by point... There we go, point 10. So now... We can effectively lower the autonomy there down to 5% in uh, Eggsden, improving the tax income and all that other good stuff without the, you know, the, the bad things of rebellion. So that is what I'm talking about. All right, new tech. So admin tech, we are ahead of time. Or not ahead of time. That will allow us to unlock the next idea group, which would be powerful in spending... Uh, points that we don't need also a plantation local goods produced let's do that or do we want to save up for the the institution and then take it let's take a look at our institutions here the printing press 
is spreading. I mean, all around. If we wanted to speed along the institution, we need 2,800 gold. And we should make that fairly quickly. So I think what I will do is I will hold off on that next technology, um, embrace the institution, lose the penalty, the 22% penalty, that will make this really cheap, and then we may be able to jump into the next idea group quick, fast, and in a hurry. That, that's what I'm thinking. Intrigue in London. A Scottish official. Samuel Fairfax's rise to high office has angered many of those closest to Octavius. Uh, relieve Samuel Fairfax of his position. Who in the world is Samuel Fairfax? Our national unrest guy. We need him. Um, it would be cool if we could get another unrest guy. So we lose 50 admin, or we lose 10 legitimacy. Our legitimacy goes up, preposterous, I say. We need the unrest guy. And that'll go up in 10 years. That, that's fine. We have a an heir with a strong claim, a lot of royal marriages. Everything is all well and good. How's Denmark? Border friction. A right to provinces is held by other gate. Okay. Cologne's opinion. Put a positive spin on things or revoke the claim. We lose their claim on Den Haag or Cologne's opinion changes by negative 50. Huh, no. Nope, we will keep that claim just in case Austria kicks the bucket and the Holy Roman Emperor is pretty weak. Then we can just go bash up on uh, Cologne and take a very strong province in this particular trade node. The Rhine Estuary, massive local trade power. That's what we need. Bohemia versus Ethiopia. Now, I believe, yeah, Ethiopia was doing the work. So good luck on that. Mongolia is pretty huge. Ming Dynasty is still there. Russia has informed. We have Russian Ural, Russian Russia. Russian Russia. Sounds good. A lot of um, upheaval, though. Yeah, it looks like rebels are trying to siege that down. Aquitaine, what are you trying to do now? The second raid on Poitou against Leon. Oh, interesting. Aquitaine is the new papal controller. So Leon, they're trying to get Poitou. Which is essentially what we wanted. I mean, we can help out our buddy, but I think they'll be on their own. It, uh... Oh, man. Leon doesn't even have any allies. Well, good luck, guys. Uh, we're not going to contribute anything uh, to the war effort. They've got... That's their entire army right there running away. Yeah, Aquitaine ain't playing around. If we didn't have Aquitaine as an ally, I would be... Uh, Pretty scared about the battle of the uh, the big boys here. All right, so making 35 ducats a month, the institution will be 2,700, and that is if these provinces here don't uh, embrace it. So 0.57 per month. I mean, in a few years' time, it'll be embraced. 0.1 a month. It's present there. 0.76. Archibald Warwick will no longer serve us. All right, so that was... Looks like uh, an admiral. Agent discovered in Cologne, I don't care. Santee is self-sustaining. Let's head on over to the New World and take a look-see. So we've got Santee there. So three development. Five development in Saluda. Three development there. Looks like Saluda is where we are heading to. Oh no, Santee. There you go, to Saluda, please. Next colonist, if you please. When is our truce over with the Powhatan? 73 in September. All right. So it might be time to start gearing up against, uh, against the Powhatan. What's their diplomacy like? 
Conquest and allied with the Cherokee. Now we don't know about the Cherokee. Might be time to bring over a contingency force, an Operation Pocahontas force, if you will. So how many transports do we have available for us? 22 transports, I think a 22 stack will be fine. All right, so we'll bring our four cannon. So we just need to drop off three infantry, I think. You guys will no longer be selected. Head on down to Omeletteville. Let's get Operation Pocahontas kicking off here. We've got until September to get these guys across the pond. All right, mount up. And if you would be so bold, please make your dock in Kanoi. All right, across the ocean they go. Operation Pocahontas will be a go here soon. Hopefully they can speed across the ocean fairly quickly. All right, so Finnmark. Yeah, I mean, Norway is continuously getting wrecked by Norwegian peasants. All right, nice. We sank a light ship, pirate ship. Didn't stand a chance. Just sort of bowled through them, I think. And then this can be our Powhatan force. And then, you know, we can uh, sort of um, deal with the Iroquois, which I believe will be up here. The Iroquois nation, as it were. And I think our vassals will be more than happy uh, to hop on that. And the Cherokee actually have some ships. Now that's, or the Powhatan, it's interesting because they are uh, colonial, but they're not Renaissance. They know how to spread, but they don't know how to write, which is interesting. All right, Aquitaine, how you doing? You winning your war? You haven't got the war goal yet. Yeah, here you come. Good luck, buddy. It is good to see you. All right, casualties. And they're reinforced, so I imagine, yep, we're all set here. We can actually mark, march a little bit closer to Doeg. And I think we can go now, can't we? Declare the war. No Cassus Belly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's get a claim then. We'll build us, a, build us up a spy network. I don't think their counter espionage is gonna be anything uh, to write home about. Make sure these ships get repaired nice and good. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about running into the cap while we build up our treasury for this tech uh, institution. 2,700 now, so as more of our, we'll go ahead and recall, as more of our counties get, the uh, institution. Wow, it's just now spreading up there. It's a shame, really. But as you know, more uh, more counties get the printing press, the cheaper that outright cost is going to be. 0 0.31, 0 0.98. Everything is good. I tell you, these 2K troops have had it easy. The Iverness's first regiment and Coventry's first regiment, they've just been chilling. Accepted peace. Leon will pay. Yep, that's fine. So we won another war. Hooray. We didn't even lift a finger. And that's what's, uh, that's what's best. How much do we need to fabricate? Just a 20. We're making 1.24 per spy network. Feels pretty good, man. Um, we can also, as soon as the war starts, get our ships out here to blockade. Cape, in Cape Hatteras, and then we can just siege that down quick, fast, and in a hurry. So, feels good, man. Feels good indeed. All right, Stavanger increases our papal influences, and Stavanger should be a Catholic county now, with really no unrest. Let's see, can we start thinking about? Promoting a culture. There is one more culture 
to promote. Norwegians, 4%. So we can spend some Diplo to accept that culture. Insult Cologne. Naval research wrong. 50 Diplo or 10 prestige. I don't want to lose the prestige and we're really okay on Diplo. We'll lose the 50 Diplo. We make seven a month, that's fine. Just a few months back, because we'll need the prestige because we're losing three a month. So we want to keep that up as high as possible. 2285 on our institution. And it's 2750. So we'll get there soonish. We'll accept the or embrace the institution. Now, if any of these guys get the institution, like Armour, that's going to be 16 development. Nice. That'll be 16 extra development that we are going to uh, get from Armour that we don't have to pay for. Fenestre will probably be a little bit better. 0.9 each month. So next month, we will gain the printing press in Armour. That's going to lower the cost significantly, and we're going to meet in the middle. Embrace the tech, then take admin tech, open up that next idea group, then we should be able to invest some Diplo points, because we're way ahead of time, nine years there and nine years there. We can finish off our military. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. We'll get our quality ideas there. The finest of horses. Chikaroa is self-sustaining. Excellent. So Waxall is a three development, and that is a three development. That's a three development. That's a five. Yeah, we can head up to Yunami. Let's see. I think these one one thousand can hold off Yunami with our tech. We'll go ahead and send a colonist there. Seems good. All right, so we'll meet in the middle on this tech. Right now it's only 2,600. Kusabo deals in cotton now. So yeah, in a scant few months time, we'll have enough to embrace the printing press, drop the 24%, snag up the admin tech for cheap, open up another idea group, and we can sort of see um, what policies we can run because right now we have exploration and expansion and let's see let's see sad news Aquitaine's royal marriage has died that is unfortunate for sure let's see yeah we need something to go with up, oh, we're almost to 20 spy network. Fabricated claim on the Powhatan. Boom. Now we can go to war. We have the Cassus Belly. We'll royal marriage up. And I think the last thing we'll do in this episode is purchase here in a few months' time the embracement. Corson Civil War. And just next month, I believe we're making 37 ducats a month now. Pretty powerful stuff. We could just wait a few months time. So yeah, next month we'll embrace the institution, take the technology, and then open up probably the diplomatic group since, I mean, it's colonial settlers, boats, not too interested in it. And we'll see what can, um, what can assist. So there we go. Embrace tech costs. And now we can get that for cheap. Embrace that. So now we're way ahead of time. All right, let's go ahead and pause and see what our next diplomatic idea group should be. So espionage ideas. I don't really like espionage ideas. Trade ideas would be pretty powerful. Um, we have expansion and quality. So that would... Um, encourage of the Merchant Navy, trade efficiency and trade steering is more powerful. Trade efficiency more powerful, I like it. Maritime I don't care, influence ideas. 
global tariffs and income from vassals, and income from vassals and institutions spread. Income from vassals, we don't really have any. Yearly prestige and the chance of a new heir. Diplo annex costs. That would be pretty powerful if there's a lot of people around us that we can just snag. Aggression, aggressive Im, aggressive expansion impact lowered. Diplo rep, envoy travel time reduced, and diplo relations. Or do we want... See, extra diplomat, we're already running out of them. Global trade power, the extra merchant would be fine. Trade range would be incredible. Trade efficiency, an extra merchant. Trade steering, and caravan power. I think we like the trade ideas. We'll go ahead and take trade ideas. And then we can buy that next idea group for more global trade power. 20%. And we can actually... We got uh, goods produced, 20%, and we can actually get another merchant to start steering some more trade. And we're two ideas away from Britannia rules the waves for better blockade efficiency and whatnot. So where do we want to send our trader? Uh, we have one steering from Bordeaux, I believe. Um, we are steering also from Lubeck. Can we steer from the White Sea? I mean, there's not really a whole lot of money there. I think now is the time that we really start steering from the Chesapeake Bay. So he'll arrive in 55 days, and then we can start steering from the Chesapeake Bay across the way right into the English Channel where we are collecting. So the more land we can get in the Chesapeake, the better off we are. International book market. Paper will be produced in London. Price of paper increases till the end of the game. Two base production and price of paper changes. So do we want to lead the world in paper or gain two base production in London? What is London currently producing now? They're producing cloth. So paper and the price of paper. Let's take paper. Oh, yes. There we go. So that was a good change for sure. So the price of paper and we deal in paper, which makes the English Channel much, much better. We've got rebels in Norway. Why for? Because. Bratsburg and Bergenschuss. Alright, so Bratsburg is running at 4.5 unrest. We need to get some troops there. Akershus is right on the border. And Bergenschuss is at 3.7. Let's split this sack, send 15 to Bratsburg, 16 to Bergenschuss, and how powerful are these rebels going to be, I wonder? 16k. So it should be fine. Um, for the time being, let's go ahead and get our leader over there just in case, and we'll see if we can quell that. But that will do it for me in this episode, ladies and gentlemen. So we are now embracing the printing press. We're dealing with rebels. We are about to declare on the Powhatan and engage Operation Pocahontas uh, against uh, Powhatan and Iroquois. We're expanding and getting our... Let's actually just see how much we're trading forward. 2.6 to the English Channel. And we should take care of these guys quick, fast, and in a hurry. There we go. Military tech for the win. 23 brave souls. And that'll do it. So we should be okay. So we'll be continuing to move into North America. Looks like Norway is still dealing with their rebels, so we might just pounce on them anyway. If we get a notification that Austria is no longer the Holy Roman Emperor, then we can jump on them. And Bob is your uncle. But that'll do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next Europa Universalis 4 video. Take care.